Good evening. Good evening. Amen. Welcome to the November 1st, 2016 regular meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Jackson Public School District. Our first order of business this evening um, is the Pledge of Allegiance that will be provided from the uh, Middle School Division and Ms. Evans will introduce our student, uh, Ms. Taylor. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. To Dr. Gray, Mr. Walters, Madam President, and school board members, it is my privilege to introduce Ms. Terriana Taylor, an eighth grade scholar at Rowan Academy. Terriana is the daughter of Ms. Erica Brooke Burks and attends school under the leadership of Principal Larry Armstrong. Terriana is the quintessence of school and community involvement. She is a member of the drill team, the praise team at her church, the Technology Student Association, and serves as the Student Council Secretary. Terriana plans to attend the Jim Hill High School as an international baccalaureate scholar. Upon completion of the IB program, this pre-nursing candidate will enroll at Alcorn State University. <laughs> Yay, I heard a yay over here. <laughs> because Terriana understands the importance of being college and career ready, she will also obtain a cosmetology license. As a public service announcement from this student council secretary, Terriana would like to take this opportunity to encourage all registered voters to let your voices be heard and your votes be counted on election day, November 8th. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Ms. Terriana Taylor. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Terriana. If you will just hold this one second, and we'd sure. like to give you an appreciation for leading the pledge. Tariana, on behalf of the school board, Madam President, uh, we appreciate you coming and bringing us the pledge. Uh, we look forward to many, many years of your service to our community when you become a nurse, when you become a cosmetologist. And um, thank you again for being here this evening. Do you, do you have any uh, supporters, family? I see Mr. Armstrong in the back. If you'll please stand, those who are help, helping to Praise Tatiana. And I will say, Tariana, Tariana was the first person in this building. She was here at about 445, <laughs> <laughs> ready to go, ready to make it happen. So we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, I think we left it off. No, no, we didn't. We'll now have moments of inspiration from uh, Rabbi Deborah Kassoff and our colleague, Ms. Campbell, will introduce her. Okay. Uh, Rabbi Deborah Kassoff was born and raised in Columbia, Maryland. Rabbi Kassoff has lived in Jackson with her family for nine of the last 13 years. She currently serves as the rabbi and leader of the Hebrew Union Congregation in Greenville, Mississippi, and she directs youth programs and religious education at Beth Israel Congregation in Jackson. From 2003 until 2006, Rabbi Kassoff worked to create the rabbinic department at the Institute of Southern Jewish Life in Jackson while visiting and serving dozens of congregations across the South. She has also taught as an adjunct professor in Millsaps and Tougaloo College and participates in Jackson 2000's Dialogue Circle program as a facilitator. She's a graduate of Williams College, Indiana University, and the Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion. 
Rabbi Kassoff lives in Bellhaven with her husband and their two daughters. Both of their daughters are enrolled in the Jackson Public Schools District. Thank you. Thank you all. It's an honor to be here tonight. I would like to begin with a teaching from Jewish tradition that I hope will leave us with an awareness of how sacred is our duty here tonight. We find in the Shulchan Aruch, which is a text deep in the heart of the Jewish tradition, it is a 16th century code of Jewish law authoritative to this day in traditional communities compiled by Rabbi Joseph Caro and he wrote, teachers for children are appointed in every city and a ban is pronounced upon the inhabitants of any city which does not have a teacher within it until they appoint a teacher for the young. And if they do not make such an appointment, they are destroying the city. That is, they are undermining rather than sustaining the future existence of the city. For the world is sustained only by the breath of school children. Mishaberach avotenu, Abraham Yitzchak, via Akov, imotenu, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, Vlea, Huivarech, et Ela, Morenu, the more, more new. May the one who blessed our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and our mothers, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless those who would advise and guide our teachers. Bless our teachers and the teachers of our teachers with insight, with wisdom, with justice, and with compassion most of all, Jewish tradition asks the question, what does God pray for? The answer, that God's compassion should outweigh her zeal for justice. The world can exist with justice, with compassion and without justice, though we may not wish it to be a world without justice. It cannot exist, Jewish tradition teaches, without compassion. And so, as we come together from different perspectives and different positions and different backgrounds and not always in agreement with one another, may we all be blessed with compassion and with awareness that what we are all doing here is working to support the school children on whose account the world is sustained. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Madam President, Ms. Burt, and the rest of the Jackson Public School Board members, as well as the Jackson Public School District, we thank you for being with us today and for bringing us those encouraging, inspiring words. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Is anyone with you this afternoon? Rabbi Kassoff, is anyone with you uh, this afternoon? <laughs> okay, that's all right. Let's thank you very much. Thank wonderful, you. wonderful words of inspiration. We have a quorum of members. I'll ask for an adoption of the agenda. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second that we adopt tonight's agenda. Those in favor? Thank you. Uh, the reading and approving of the minutes of the October 18th special meeting and regular meeting. Entertain a motion for adoption. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second that we adopt the October 18th, 2016 special meeting and regular meeting. Those in favor? Thank you.
Public participation, general comments. Uh, Ms. Turner. Board members, we have two persons who have signed up to address you this evening. First, Ms. Deborah, I hope I don't mispronounce the name, Kassoff, who would like to address you on the procedure for finding and selecting Dr. Gray's successor. Oh, Rabbi. Okay. <laughs> No idea I'd be up again so soon. Thank you, <laughs> thank you again for allowing me to speak. Um, as I'm, as you heard in my bio, my daughters both attend Jackson Public Schools, and we've been really happy with the experience that they've had at Davis Magnet and starting this year at Power APAC. Um, and I think there have been a lot of wonderful developments that have taken place over the course of Dr. Gray's career. I haven't even seen Dr. Gray. I don't know. No, he's not he's here. here tonight. I just, I'm sorry? He's not here tonight. He is not here no, tonight. Not. I, if he was, I wanted to acknowledge him. Um, I am concerned that going forward, the process for finding a successor be transparent to parent involvement. Um, I would like for parents to be able to be part of the conversation about what we are looking for in a superintendent of schools. Um, and I, I just hope that as you uh, confer on this topic at what I know is a really challenging time, um, that you take that into account. I think that uh, the more parents can be engaged in our kids' um, education, as you all well know, the better results we can all have. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Next board members, Ms. Alisa Hughes has also asked to address you on the superintendent selection. Okay, Ms. Hughes. person before me that was my concern about parents participation typically in the past we've used PTA presidents site board members site council members I'm not either but I want to make sure that I have a say in who my daughter's next superintendent is and I'm sure other parents are thinking the same thing so I was just wondering about the process and making sure that all parents not have a say and make sure that we're included in that conversation when it comes to selecting our next superintendent. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. We're now down to review of discipline cases. Doc, Dr. Knox. There are none. Wonderful. And I understand that we have uh, Mr. Uh, Walters, their superintendent's report this evening. All right. Ms. Bird, I, I actually had a question about the discipline um, questions. Okay. If we may. I, I noticed that we had um, five elementary schoolers who were suspended or expelled long term, including a second grader. Um, I know I've recommended policy in the past to. Uh, ensure that especially our younger years K through three are not suspended or expelled long term because those are usually I want to say they're usually parent issues uh, although I don't want to misconstrue what I mean by that but the um, uh, I'm a little bit concerned that we would suspend or expel elementary schools for such uh, schoolers for such long periods of time and I do hope that we could think about addressing that in our next uh, review of the code of conduct and the next review of our policies related to school discipline and so I hope my colleagues um, will hear me out on that. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Dothenheim. So we are now down to consent agenda items finance. Ms. Miller. Thank you, Ms. Bird, Mr. Walters. Um, board members, I present to you the accounts payable and activity fund claims for the period of October 8th through October 21st, 2016 for your approval. Motion for action. 
So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt consent agenda items finance. Questions, Mr. Jones? Uh, thank you so much. Um, as I look at the um, accounts that have been, the accounts payable, um, what, how much of this is going toward, or how much in terms of where are we as we look, in, look at our cap to know from, in terms of budget wise, how far out are we in, as it relates to, 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 our, to, the, to the fund balance? How, how, where are we on that? Has there been a, any major? No, sir. Um, as far as it relates to the cap, no, sir. Um, <coughs> we are developing a plan that we hope to present to you on the next board meeting that will require some consideration of the board to address some of the bigger ticket items that are addressing the cap. Um, the majority of the expenditures that we see now that are headed toward the cap are really being spent in facilities. So you will see them in their supply lines, um, fire extinguishers, uh, plumbing supplies, HVAC supplies. So you see it basically in supply lines that we've been using the budget that as it exists. So we are still within budget. We're still monitoring the budget. So there are no major expenditures related to the cap at this point. Okay. Where are we on our fund balance? Are we in line with that as it relates to these upcoming uh, anticipated expenditures? You um, probably can give me a, a breakdown on specific ones, particularly what has gone out and what is anticipated to go out. Do I need to get the numbers on the, for the fund balance? The one I'm referring to? Um, 1120? Yes, sir. Okay, I, 2014 and 1985. Okay. Just kind of break down the loss. Okay. Uh, now, Another, at the next board meeting, the, the second board meeting is the board meeting that I always bring you the financial reports. So you will have all those fund balances at that I got point. you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and if, if I may, uh, colleagues, um, on the um, bus purchase, purchases. Yes, sir. Um, I know when we were uh, reviewing the um, different insurance uh, uh, companies as we signed up on. Mm -hmm. um, how has it worked out um, with the training for the um, bus facility? Have, have, have they engaged or are you the person I need to ask? Or? Um, I, it's, it actually falls under risk management, but I can tell you that they are actually, um, Mr. Um, Johnson with uh, Bottrell conducts those trainings along with uh, Ms. Chrysler and they coordinate that with Mr. Williams at transportation. So um, I think we've seen some decline and we've actually seen some increase in the number of trainings that they've provided. So not just with risk management, but bus training as it is that Mr. Williams is doing. Okay, so we have had, he, Mr. Johnson has come over and provided training. I believe so, but I can make sure Ms. Crystal gives me that definite information. Please do, mm -hmm. okay. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. For, for Absolutely. Those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Consent agenda items general, approval of agreement between Hope Credit Union and Jackson Public Schools. Dr. Murray. Uh, Ms. Burt, Ms. Walters, board members. Uh, the high school division recommends the approval of Hope Credit Union Learning Laboratory Branch at Provine High School. Uh, the credit union branch will open to high school staff and students in accordance with the agreement that you have. Um, the name of the academy will be designated as the Hope Credit Union Academy of Business and Finance at Provine. Uh, and just uh, for informational purposes, our plan is to create a footprint. Uh, we've already started about a year ago. We started some work with uh, internships and externships uh, we hope to have a fully operable credit union within a year, but to start, we, uh, we be, we'll be bringing in a kiosk uh, up on board approval so the students can open accounts, no cash, uh, but be able to open accounts and transact um, business as a training mechanism. And so that's what we're asking for approval for tonight. I, I think that is uh, just incredible, and I'd like to thank Bill Bynum and uh, uh, Hope Credit Union for such a wonderful experiential mm -hmm. uh, program for our students. It's nothing like doing. Mm -hmm. 
and um, you know we'll be happy when uh, they go through the training process and perhaps they can actually start some cash savings accounts yes, uh, as well so we look forward to that uh, mr. Oppenheim um, mr. Jones and then mr. Oppenheim All right. thank you this is great news uh, uh, <coughs> banking is a very very true important piece for all of our students um, the question I have is we understand they're coming in with a kiosk based on the information mm -hmm. What other types of technology are they going to provide to those students as well as to those instructors who will be in there, in, in, you know, engaged? Or have we asked <coughs> the question about uh, putting uh, iPads or, 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 or laptops in these, in these youngsters' hands that are going through this, this training with them? Uh, right, that's phase one. We, we actually started this process about a year ago. Right. We're following a model out of Nashville where they have multiple credit unions across their school district. And so uh, those things are, are on the table. We can, we can approach them. They're very open to conversation. Uh, but right now, we're going to start just with the kiosk so that students can use it as a training tool and they can actually open accounts uh, okay. in the school so that, that we can approach them with that conversation. Okay. Yes, sir. Please allow, um, as you get into that conversation, mm -hmm. um, please direct it back to us because it's important to know um, that these our students have needs mm -hmm. and um, hope is doing good work mm -hmm. and and we appreciate what they're doing but our kids definitely need the technology in their hands to support mm -hmm. what they're doing not just a kiosk mm -hmm. you know yes, we, we understand that but we want them to be able to have a real-time look at mm -hmm. the, the technology and I'm sure mm -hmm. mr. Bynum and mr. Idy and all their staff over there would greatly mm -hmm. appreciate a whole classroom full of kids sitting with uh, uh, iPads and laptops mm -hmm. based on their generosity. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Abenheim. Yeah, thanks, Madam President. I just wanted to echo your, your sentiments. <coughs> I know Dr. Murray has been uh, working um, overtime hardcore to make this happen and so many other things that he does with the academies um, in our high schools. I think to put into perspective and to think about that this will be a functioning credit union, not only for the students, but in the long term for the community, when you look at Ellis Avenue and all the checks cashing and payday lenders and whatnot, to the fact that there's not yes. a credit union or, or an actual bank, that that's huge. It's huge for our community. It's huge for our kids. Um, it's a great learning opportunity. And um, I just wanted to kind of echo your sentiments um, and give kudos to where it's deserved. Absolutely. It's been moved and second that we adopt consent agenda item general A. Those in favor? Aye. Thank you, Dr. Murray. We're now down to consent agenda items personnel. Approval of personnel matters. To Ms. Third, uh, Mr. Walters, members of the board, the administration asks for the approval of staff personnel matters as listed in board material. Thank you, members. Uh, I have a question. Did we vote on item B? As, was that a clump, item A and B together? The MSBA? The, uh, under I academies of high schools? Right. I, item B, the approval of agreement between school board association no, and No, we did not. We not, we did mm -hmm. not, excuse me, thank you. So we will um, return to approval of the agreement between Mississippi School Board Association and the Jackson Public Schools District. Thank you, uh, Ms. Doppenheim. This is very important. Um, Ms. Burt, board members, the administration is recommending approval of the agreement between the Jackson Public School District and the Mississippi School Boards Association. Through this contract, um, the district policies will be housed and maintained on the MSBA's online policy system. Additionally, MSBA will assist the district in uploading current district policy to the online website, as well as formatting current policy that's currently in PDF format into Word format in order to upload it to the online policy system. Thank you. This uh, will also give us an opportunity to make sure that we stay up to date with all our policies and procedures 
and that as they become even ready, available for revision, that there will be a, an automatic indication that they need to be revised and it will decrease the work and of course we'll never see this as a uh, hit or not. Yes, mm -hmm. as a, a corrective action request. So um, I will entertain a motion for approval and then we can have some discussion. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second that we approve of the agreement between the School Board Association and the Jackson Public School District. Mr. Oppenheim. Thanks, Madam President, and thank you for bringing this uh, to us, Ms. Day. Just a couple questions on, and it might be too far in advance to think about it, but um, the functionality of it. Will this allow us to, right now on our website, you could kind of search, you do the little control F thing, you could search like a title inside of, um, uh, of a policy, but you can't necessarily search the substance inside the policy, as far as I could tell. Um, just from the, the links on the website, you have to go into the link to find it. Will this allow us to do something like if I wanted to find information about our suspension policy or our bullying policy or whatnot to go straight in and do a quick search? Absolutely. Once all of the policies are uploaded into the system, you can actually conduct a substantive search. Okay. And I think, you know, what is really wonderful about it is that if we want to look at best practices somewhere else, we're able uh, to do that. And so it just, I think, generates a lot of uh, opportunities for us to be creative, but also to look at uh, best practices across <coughs> the state. Is, is there also, and thank you for that, is there also a way, I know um, we probably have our own kind of internal clocks of when policies are up for revision or when we get new state legislation that we then have to interpret through state policy into our policy, will those kind of indicators be like easily accessible on the new format? Absolutely, it's my understanding that um, through this agreement and by housing our policies on the MSBA online system that MSBA will actually make the district aware right. of changes in the law and, um, and rules and regulations. Thank you. Those in favor? Thank you. Now we'll proceed to consent agenda items personnel. Ms. Lyons. Ms. Berg, Ms. Walters, members of the board. The administration asks for the approval of staff personnel matters as listed in board material. Motion for action. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second that we adopt consent agenda items, personnel approval of staff personnel matters. Questions? <coughs> Those in favor? Thank you, Ms. Lyons. We're now down to other business. And consideration to hold an executive session. What would we be discussing in executive session? Yeah, I mean, are we going into? Oh yeah, we will. What What would we be? Mm -hmm. Superintendent performance and resolution of that matter. But we're not talking about the process uh, going forward. That wouldn't be an executive no. session. Matter. Right. Good. No. Okay. Just making sure. Thank you. <laughs> Entertain a motion to consider holding an executive session. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second that we consider holding an executive session. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We will um, go into executive session and, of course, we'll report out afterwards.